we're here again. You're supposed to be starting a new life. Look, they know something's up, okay? So if I didn't come here tonight, then they'd know. You should have just left. No. Well, they know you're still on the side, so they know that they can get to me through you. Mitch! What are you using tonight? Uh, I told someone I wouldn't anymore. What about you? I'm a recovering addict. Suit yourself. So, Chloe, what's new? I just finished my hairdressing and makeup course. Oh, wow, how exciting. And I actually just got a job at Western Sydney. You're leaving the Shire? I thought, you know, me and you could, uh... Just because you magically came back to life, get back together? Yeah, I mean, no. This isn't a fairy tale, Mitch. You can't just snap your fingers and everything will go back to the way it was before. Why not? Well, I know you still care about me. I do, but it's just not that simple. After all that's happened, I'm finally starting to get my life back on track. My new job, my relationship with Lindsay, even though she may not be my real sister, I can't just throw it all away again. So what you really, so what you're really saying is, I'm just Mitch, the drug dealer. I'm just gonna stop up your life again. Is that it? I'm sorry. Maybe you should leave. Hey, Big Bella, I've got the shit. But what do you want? Yeah, just here, Ringo. I'm gonna need them now. Oh, fuck. I see the pain in those eyes, but you know what always gets rid of the pain. Just for the just like me. Feeling any better today, Tatum? I was just reading your file last night, and I saw that you had a bad year with the death of your mother and your father. What's your point? My point is, maybe you need to talk to someone. Someone like me? We've all been there, Tatum. We all feel like nobody cares about us. And we feel like, whatever we do, no one will notice us. <laughs> okay, Doc, stop trying to feed me crap. Okay, Tatum. Would you like to know why I became a doctor? Uh, no, and frankly, I don't care. Well, you're going to listen anyway. My mum was a university professor and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia when I was 11. When I was 18, I placed my mum in a mental institution and she's been there ever since. I send her letters every day because I feel the guilt of not visiting her. Because of her illness, it can be passed on genetically. I know what it's like to be afraid of your own mind. So your guilt of locking up your own mother makes you want to help others in her position? You can't even go and see her. I can help you. But only if you let me. I do not need help. How many times must I tell you people? I chose to do those things, you know. Kill my father. Keep my sister hostage. Shoot the lawyer's brother. I chose to do it because I wanted to. What makes you think you can stop me? Okay, nothing or no one can. Can't you feel all the worries in the world just drift away? I forgot my bag. What are you doing? That's not cool. Well, like you said, you know, there's a difference between saying and doing. The cops are going to be here soon, so just uh, give that a look. Are you okay? See you, love. Free it, your bags. You want to rest the screw with the law. Nice work, Mitch. Cheers, baby. You're the right to remain silent. You also have the right to return to you. Sure you, Bella. Miss Lloyd, you're up. <clears throat> My client, Mr. Baker, is an upstanding citizen with no previous criminal record. The relationship between my client and Sophie is legal. Sophie is obviously over the age of consent, being 18. When they started their relationship, Mr. Baker was her teacher. It could be argued that Mr. Baker took advantage of a child, regardless of the fact that Sophie is not a child, and you see my client with her own free will. This trial isn't about Mr. Baker. It's a victimless crime. Society has deemed certain actions are morally wrong, even though no one is harmed by the act itself. Some people think, why would you want to be a defence attorney? You're always dealing with criminals who have broken the law. And sometimes you think to yourself, why am I bothering? I tell you why. Because once, in a blue moon, there is someone who is innocent, 
someone who is accused of a crime they did not commit. It's their life in my hands. My client, Mr. Baker, did not commit this crime. Thank you. I'm going to make this quick. Mr. Baker knowingly and willingly broke the law by breaching the trust between a student and a teacher. What if next time the student doesn't want to be with Mr. Baker? Who knows what this sexual predator would do? I'm sure you don't send your child to school and have to worry about them getting preyed upon. There'll be a short recess break. When I come back, I will have reached a verdict. Tell me the truth, Katie. What are my chances of getting out of this? 50-50, but Toby, even if you get away with the charges, you won't ever teach again. You know that, right? I have to do what's right. Hmm? Told you that? Oh. The fact that Mr Baker is a fine member of the community with no criminal record and that Miss Hart consented to this relationship is regardless because Mr Baker knew the consequences of his actions yet continued to see the student. Parents send their children to school knowing they have trust and security not to have teachers preying upon them. Maybe in different circumstances this could have been allowed, but not in my court. I find the defendant Tobias Baker guilty of breaching duty of care. What? <laughs> no! You entrapped her family and abused their trust as a teacher. Therefore, I sentence you to five years jail and two years early parole. Your Honor, I'd like an appeal. No, don't worry. What? Just let it go. Tough case, Miss Floyd. Yeah, congratulations. You know, it's just my job. <laughs> Tobias. You're enjoying this, eh? Hey? You bet I am. Miss Lloyd is a nice lady. It's a shame that only one of us got the outcome that we wanted. What are you talking about? It's her job to win court cases. It's just my job to catch the people responsible. I win, Tobias. You lose. Hey. Hey, how are you going? Pretty good, considering I just got sentenced to jail. It's alright. Kate is applying for your appeal. It'll all be okay. I don't get it. How can everyone just leave us alone? It's not like we're hurting anyone. I'm old enough to understand how I feel, and I know that I love you. What's so bad about that? Right. I don't want an appeal. You have to leave. But I love you. No, you just think you do. Look, what we have is we're fighting for. That's what we want to keep doing. That's what we're going to keep doing. We can get through this, I know it. Are you listening to me? It's over. What? You can't make me disappear just because you say it's over. There's no way people would ever understand. So that's what this is about? What other people think? I've sacrificed so much for you. And you think I haven't sacrificed anything? I've lost my entire career over this. Look, Sophie, I just want you to have a chance at a normal life. And we can never have that. Can't you see? I don't care about having a normal life. I'm going crazy not seeing you. I think about you every minute. Look, I, I know. But it's over. So you don't care anymore? Is that it? It doesn't... It doesn't matter how I feel. And tell me you don't love me. Will it help? If that's what I have to hear. I don't... I don't love you. A person just doesn't wake up someday and decide to stop loving someone. Don't. No! Don't talk to me like I'm some stupid kid! But that's the thing, Sophie! You are just a kid! I can't believe you're doing this after all we've been through. My life is over now. But you still have a chance. I don't want a life. You're not in it. So what? You're just gonna wait for me? That's it? No, just... Just leave! Just go! Just get out!